Springs, Colorado. South winds are connected right now. They come to us from places near and far. I'm a mechanical engineer. In emergency medicine. They bring to us a wealth of talents and experience. This is our next generation of trailblazers. Their road to our next giant leap starts today. From NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Norm Knight and Shannon Walker. Good morning, and welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center for our astronaut candidate graduation. I'm Norm Knight, Director of Flight Operations. And I'm Shannon Walker, Deputy Chief of the Astronaut Office. Another title that I've had over the last two years that is arguably equally important is Class Supervisor, known to some as Class Mom. <laughs> so let's welcome them to the room. What do you say? Yeah. All right, please welcome NASA's 23rd astronaut class. applause. Fantastic. How about another one while they take their seats? This is a very exciting day for all of us here, for our nation, and for all humanity. Together, we honor our newest class of astronauts, 10 American men and women from NASA, and two United Arab Emirate candidates from the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center who will graduate their basic training and will earn their wings to join the active astronaut corps. It's been two years of rigorous training and testing, and it all culminates today. You will see throughout the program today that the breadth and depth of experience that this class brings to our space program is nothing short of amazing. This class is made up of engineers, scientists, a doctor, helicopter, pilots, and jet pilots. We have both military and civilian backgrounds. Behind these blue flight suits, they are also parents, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, friends. They have interests and hobbies, just like you and me. Among many things, this class has athletes, explorers, volunteers, and some even claim to be good cooks. This class does have unique and special talents that they bring to NASA. And in fact, we believe that everyone has a special talent that they can bring to our astronaut corps. And that is why we are so excited to announce that we are taking applications again, and we would love to add your talents to our team. 
If you think you have what it takes, applications for our next class of astronauts is now live and open. And for those watching at home, you can scan the QR code and apply. Now that we've done a bit of housekeeping, it's time to celebrate our newest class of astronauts. And to help us kick it off, please give a warm Houston welcome to Johnson Space Center Director Vanessa Weish. Good morning. For more than 60 years, NASA's Johnson Space Center has led the world in human space exploration. Johnson has served as the home of America's Astronaut Corps, International Space Station, Mission Operations, the Orion and Gateway programs, and a host of future space developments. Today, we're operating more human spacecraft than ever before. Last year, we celebrated 25 years of successful operations and 23 years of continuous human presence aboard the International Space Station to test technologies, conduct scientific research, and develop skills needed to explore deep space. We recently launched our eighth rotational mission with SpaceX's Crew Dragon. And just this morning, they docked and ingress to the International Space Station. Yes. And we're also looking forward to the upcoming crewed flight tests of a Boeing Starliner and Orion. Our astronaut corps puts the human in human spaceflight. And I'm so excited and proud of these 10 NASA astronauts and two UAE astronauts, affectionately known as FLIES, as they have completed their training and will now be eligible for flight assignments to the space station, the moon under the Artemis program, and Mars. But first, we're honored to be joined by some special guests. Please join me in welcoming NASA leadership, as Associate Administrator Jim Free. Deputy Associate Administrator, Casey Swales. And many of our NASA leaders from headquarters and centers from all across our agency. I'd like to also welcome staff representing Congressman Brian Babin, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia, and Congressman Dan Crenshaw. Thank you for joining us. And in person, we have Harris County Precinct 2 Commissioner Adrian Garcia, and Councilman Fred Flickinger. Thank you for your support. We're also pleased to be joined by the international community. With us today, we have representatives from the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. Please wave. <laughs> and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Please wave. <laughs> Through our international partnerships under Artemis, we're building a global alliance. Artemis is the most diverse international space exploration coalition in history, with 36 countries having signed the Artemis Accords. And we look forward to further collaboration together as we explore deep space for the benefit of all. Today is a big day, and much like space, I'm sure the journey was challenging at times. Each one of you have unique experiences that led you to NASA, but you all have one commonality, the pursuit of exploration. Two years ago, these astronaut candidates submitted their outstanding resumes, were selected from a pool of 12,000 applicants, relocated their families, and began calling Houston home. 
To the families, friends, and mentors who have supported today's graduates, we thank you. And to the students with us today, from LaPorte ISD, Clear Creek ISD, and our high school aerospace scholars, and those watching, know that these astronauts were once just like you, full of curiosity and dreams. You are the future explorers, scientists, engineers, inventors, and mathematicians of the Artemis generation. Your potential is endless. You too can push the boundaries of what's possible. We all here are anticipating your notable contributions to our missions. Congratulations to our 12 newest astronauts. I look forward to all that you will accomplish in witnessing your giant leaps as we venture to the moon and then onward to Mars. Thank you, Vanessa, and thank you for all the work you do in leading the teams here at the Johnson Space Center. A little more than two years ago, we brought these 12 individuals to JSC to embark on this new chapter of their lives called space exploration. I have no doubt that they can all vividly recall the day that they applied, the interviews that followed, and the day they received that life-changing phone call from a Houston, Texas area code to tell them that they were selected by NASA to become an astronaut. They moved here from various parts of the world and the country and jumped right into training. The astronaut candidate training program is demanding and very broad in material. Over the course of what we call spaceflight readiness training, this group has learned how to fly in the T-38 jet. They've learned spacewalking skills in our underwater neutral buoyancy lab right up the road. They've learned about the International Space Station, which is the foundation it is setting uh, for deep space exploration. They've studied the building blocks for Artemis, the Orion spacecraft, the Space Launch System launch vehicle, and our future lunar outpost, the Gateway. They've completed wilderness and water survival training as a team. Throughout it all, I have seen them dig in and pull together and work through issues of all kinds. This skill, teamwork, is the most critical skill in human spaceflight and in life. When we come together, there are no limits to what we can accomplish. Teamwork is what's gonna take us back to the moon and beyond. Today is especially exciting for me because over the last two years, I have had the opportunity to see each and every talent that these 12 candidates have to offer. And now they get to share their talents with this agency and the world. They are competent, they are hardworking, they are fun, and overall, exceptional human beings. Once you're accepted as an astronaut candidate, that's when the astronaut training begins. Astronaut training is, I would say, challenging, but fun. It's been a growing experience. It's intense, it's dynamic, and it's very rewarding. One day, you might be in class studying space station systems. The next day, you might be flying in a T-38 jet doing a training flight. And then the day after that, you might be underwater in a spacesuit doing a practice EVA. I think my favorite part was actually the spacewalk part. You know, you're in the pool, um, and it is also the most challenging. I love the feeling of being pressurized in the suit and submerging underwater and moving in a space-like environment in the neutral buoyancy lab, this giant pool we have where we have a mock-up of the International Space Station and we practice spacewalks and maintenance. You're just riding this high the whole time that you're in a spacesuit and you're in the pool. It's, it's really just a great day. The most fun part of astronaut training for me was learning how to fly a jet. Flying the T-38, it's fun because it's an adventure. It's really weather-based, so you're working through problems, you're trying to plan for fuel, you're trying to plan for logistics. Going that fast in a vehicle was exhilarating. The fun part of training was being in the wilderness. It's so amazing, it's a new experience for me. Coming from diverse backgrounds and being immersed right into like a survival training event right out of the gate uh, in the cold and the wet, just challenges that we had to support each other through and, and that happens throughout the flows. Interesting weather, it could be very cold, uh, rainy, uh, interesting terrain you have to overcome. Some of the uh, geology trips were actually quite hot. 
but ultimately getting to camp together, spend that time together, tell each other stories and get to know each other better it has just been uh, very rewarding. Training together as a class has helped us build relationships with each other, which is extremely important in space flight. Because once you go up to space, the people you travel with are your family, they are your support system. Not only have I spent these two years learning from classes taught by amazing instructors across NASA, but I've also had the opportunity to learn from astronauts that have flown to space before, flight directors and engineers that have flown many people to space, so it's a community of knowledge. We have a robust training program here, and I've got confidence in that system, and I've got confidence in the team that's gonna prepare us to go. So I think the day that I get to strap in the rocket, I'm gonna be excited, I'm gonna be ready, and I, I can't wait for that moment. I feel honored and humbled to be a part of humanity's spacefaring years. I think exploration is one of humanity's most noble pursuits, the creativity, the discovery, the innovation. And I feel a deep responsibility to be a link in the chain of explorers that have come before me to help push human knowledge, human experience, and challenge our beliefs of what we thought was possible. We have two astronauts here with us today who sat on this very stage in those seats four years ago and received their astronaut pins, astronaut pins just like you will today. Since then, they have both traveled to the International Space Station on different spacecraft. They have broken barriers and set new records. Please welcome NASA astronauts Frank Rubio and Jessica Watkins. Thank you, Shannon, and congratulations, Flies. We are so excited to be here celebrating you today. We know that you've worked hard to get here, but we also know that you know that there's still a lot of work left. But we know that you're up to the task, and you guys are gonna to continue to crush it. Keep up the great work. I couldn't agree more. And you all really couldn't be graduating at a better time. As Director Weish pointed out, we have more ways to get to low Earth orbit than ever before. In addition to Soyuz, we've already had SpaceX Crew Dragon safely carry nine crews and 34 NASA and international partner astronauts in the, to the International Space Station in the past four years. And once Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams complete the Boeing crewed flight test this spring, we'll officially add Starliner to our fleet. We cheer our colleagues on, we, and we cheer our commercial partners on. Our success goes hand in hand with their success. Flies, you are already part of the astronaut family. And now, we look forward to flying and exploring space together with you. You bring such a diverse and amazing set of skills, experiences, and personalities. You make us a better core. Together, we will continue to proudly represent NASA and our partner agencies as we go further and more permanently into our solar system. Before we go, we have a very special guest who couldn't be here today, astronaut Laurel O'Hara. The reason she couldn't be here today is because she happens to be living and working 260 miles above our planet aboard the International Space Station, and she wanted to send a special message. Greetings, Flies, from the International Space Station, and congratulations to all of you on your graduation. I'm sorry I couldn't be there to celebrate you with you today, but as you know, we've been pretty busy up here conducting science, spacewalks, and station upgrades, making sure the station is ready for you when it's your time to fly. I know the training to get to where you are today was not easy, so don't forget to take a moment to be proud of yourselves and how far you've come both as individuals and as a class. I can tell you one thing is for sure, the International Space Station is well worth the wait. And who knows, some of you may even go farther to the moon and even to Mars. You are inspiring a new generation of space explorers and I can't wait to see the things you accomplish on and off planet Earth. You were selected by NASA because of your natural curiosity and passion for exploration. Never let that fade. Even though your ASCAN training has ended, stay sharp on your studies and continue to push yourself and your teammates to new heights. 
And remember, your veteran astronaut colleagues are always here to help. I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to tell you in person and give you all big hugs when I return to Earth. Again, congratulations. Thank you, Laurel, and we, uh, we really can't wait to welcome him home in just a few weeks. You know, it's one of the agency's busiest seasons yet aboard the International Space Station, with vehicles and crews coming and going. On Sunday, we successfully launched Crew 8 to the International Space Station, and next week, we will welcome Crew 7 home. Just about two weeks from now, NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson will launch on a Soyuz spacecraft to the station, and then about a week later, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara will return home from her six-month stay. And the busy season doesn't stop there. In a couple of months, NASA, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams will be the first humans to launch aboard the Boeing Starliner spacecraft, a critical test flight that will further enable crew rotation to our orbiting laboratory. All that to say, it's a busy and exciting time in human spaceflight, and we can't wait to have this class in the mix of it all. For more than 23 years, the International Space Station has served as a hub for scientific research and technology demonstration. What we've learned there and what we continue to learn is what's helping us to travel deeper into space, paving the road for future long-duration trips to the moon, Mars, and beyond. I'm sure you've heard, but we have another pretty big mission coming up, and we have the commander here to tell you more about it. Please help me welcome the Artemis II Commander, Reed Weissman. I gotta find my crew out there just so I have my safety net. All right, excellent. Uh, so, wow, what a great day. So much energy. Uh, so much adrenaline. What is the Artemis generation? In my opinion, it's you. It's me. It's Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams as they head out on Boeing's first flight to the International Space Station. It's Matt, Mike, Jeanette, and Sasha who docked just this morning. It's Tracy, it's Laurel, it's Jasmine, and it's Andy. It's my dad up in Baltimore sitting on his couch, probably watching this right now. It's our school teachers, it's all you students out there in the crowd, it's our NASA interns, it's our police officers. It's a young lady in second grade in France who is learning her first math problems. The Artemis generation is all of us, all of us on planet Earth, coming together to explore our solar system. Oh, flies. It's an honor to be standing here with you today as we celebrate our 23rd class of NASA astronauts. This class in particular is near and dear to my heart. Marcos, Vapor, Radio, Ranger, Stretch, C-Dub, Jess, Denise, Andre, Luke, Nora, and Mohammed. I'm so proud of the work you have done, and I'm excited to watch as you begin your careers and chart your path in our astronaut office. In about a year and a half, I'll launch with three of the finest astronauts I know, Victor Glover, Christina Cook, and Jeremy Hansen. Together, we'll launch on a mission around the moon, the first crewed lunar mission of our Artemis generation. The foundation that our agency is, work, is laying during Artemis II, together with industry and our international partners, this sets the stage for what our astronaut corps will do next. For those in the crowd, look around you. Look at the astronauts on this stage. Look at the astronauts in the crowd. We are the ones entrusted by our nations to further critical research on the International Space Station. We will venture 250,000 miles and dock with the Gateway. And we will cheer as some of us, hopefully some of these men and women you see on stage, set their footprints on the moon and guide us in our shared vision for one day exploring Mars. To you 12, you will set records, but the best part is you'll watch your friends break them. You will shape the future of this office, and you will contribute to our space program simply by being yourselves. 
because you know how deeply I feel about that. We hired you for you. My final comment is to say what I said when we shared the stage two years ago when we first announced the selection of your class. I would love it if you would look into the audience, I know the lights are bright, but find those who came here to support you today. Find your parents, find your friends, find your family, your brothers and sisters, and thank them, wave to them. Because when it is all said and done, you will need those people more than any other in your life, your family and friends. <laughs> all right, it's time for me to hand the microphone over to Dr. Harrison Schmidt. For those of you who know Dr. Schmidt, or as we affectionately call him, Jack, you know, I'm looking at him right now, you know a man of intelligence, you know a man of kindness, and most of all, a man of absolute humble service to human spaceflight. The Artemis generation, every one of us here today, everyone watching this on TV, we stand on the shoulder of giants, and there are none larger than Apollo 17 astronaut, geologist, Dr. Harrison Schmidt. Well, as some of you uh, may be aware, one of the traditions of uh, me talking a little bit in public is to uh, provide some moon balls. Now, with that out of the way, <laughs> my wife, uh, by the way, gang, sends her regards. It was great to have you there a couple years ago. Really, a lot of fun. We entertained them at a winery, but they don't talk about that very much. <laughs> Congratulations, gang. Unbelievable. I'm almost 60 years since uh, Group 4, which I was part of, stood on this stage, or I guess we sat on this stage, uh, and uh, had we known what Group 23 was going to be like, we probably never would have volunteered. <laughs> it would have been a waste of time. The, uh, today, one of the major milestones has been reached by this group of people, outstanding people. It's on the way to a flight assignment, and as I understand from this morning, a few assignments have already been made. There are many more opportunities today than there were in the 60s and 70s for activities in space. Back then, uh, only piloting uh, was the real category. Uh, in 1960, Five, the move was made, actually 64, the move was made to bring some scientists, including a physician, into the program. But uh, we all ended up being T-38 pilots, uh, which was really great. Uh, there are openings for many other professionals now in the program. And I still believe, however, that assimilating the discipline of flying jet aircraft is an essential foundation to human spaceflight and will be for years and possibly decades to come. That discipline is extraordinarily important. As Deke Slayton uh, told Congress many, many times when they were trying to eliminate T-38s from the budget, it's our only sci psychological trainer. If you get in trouble in a T-38, you gotta take care of it yourself. You get in trouble in a simulator, you press a button, reset, ask the guys down at the console to, let's try it again. You can't do that in a jet. Now today, 
The moon is calling us again for uh, more reasons than in the past. Although Cold War II has started, in my opinion, uh, and that ha is a national imperative that we respond to, that ch to the challenges that are coming down. Space science, lunar science in particular, is uh, certainly a very important part of the future. And more so than in the past, biomedical science has become important. For example, if this group finds that they adapt fully to one-sixth gravity, then that solves a number of the issues, operational issues, of, of uh, going to Mars over a long period of time, where three-eighths gravity means that you're going to adapt. That's important information to have. We don't have it right now. If you ask me, I think they will adapt to lunar gravity. I felt like I was adapting, but still it's something we need to verify. And of course, uh, for those of us involved in thinking about lunar resources, we need an international, a recognized international, uh, if not just uh, free world regime for um, dealing with lunar resources in order to avoid future conflicts. There are commercial interests as well, in addition to the national interests. Resources are driving those uh, commercial interests primarily. Settlement is on the horizon. Can you imagine sometime in the future, a group of settlers on the moon saying we're tired of taxation without representation? <laughs> Jefferson's little revolution may occur. The moon, of course, is a stepping stone, the second stepping stone, Earth being the first, to Mars and beyond. Human evolution in the universe has begun. I tried to make this point as we left the moon in, in 1972, uh, but I, I think it's still extraordinarily valid. Human beings are moving into space. As part of the Artemis generation, all of you will participate in what I would call the sixth major miracle in human history. There have been many small steps between each of these steps, either, each of these uh, miracles. 14 billion years ago, approximately, fundamental particles and energy were created that led to what we see around us today. And from a fundamental physics point of view, if not a personal point of view, from a fundamental physics point of view, there appear to have been no mistakes in the creation of those particles and energy. One million years ago, humans realized that control over fire would improve their lives. Well, it's control over fire that's going to take these folks into space. So there's a long chain there. Three to maybe 4,000 years ago, the basic rules for a stable democratic society based on free will were codified. 2,200 million, uh, years ago, these rules began to spread throughout, through the inspiration of a single remarkable human being. 200 years ago, the Constitution of the United States provided a blueprint for what a stable democratic society could be as imagined 4,000 years earlier. And, and six, 55 years ago, humans began the journey away from the Earth into the universe. Now, will the seventh major miracle be the birth of the first Martian? Watch it, guys. <laughs> so I guess you see where you are in this broad s sequence of miracles. Thank you for this opportunity to be with you, and particularly thank you for your friendship and your dedication to what we're trying to do here uh, today. Good luck, but you know better than to depend on it. <laughs> Hard work, dedication, and freedom have brought you this far. Let's stick with it. Thank you very much.
Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for those words, Jack. The work that you and your fellow astronauts did for NASA and our country forever changed the world and paved the way for these astronaut graduates. Next up, we have someone who is no stranger to big challenges. He was at the helm of NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate for Artemis I, a successful uncrewed test flight and critical milestone that proved that we are, once again, ready to return to the moon and look beyond. He is responsible for developing NASA's Moon to Mars architecture and planning for NASA's deep space exploration approach. He now serves as senior advisor to Administrator Bill Nelson and Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy. Please give a warm welcome to NASA's Associate Administrator, Jim Free. All right, thanks, Norm. Good morning, good morning. Everybody ready to go? All right. Uh, let's see, first, I was working on my application in the audience, uh, so I have 12 references now. I feel really good about that. Uh, so good morning again on behalf of the administrator, uh, Bill Nelson, the deputy administrator, uh, Colonel Pam Melroy, welcome to this incredible day. Thank you for joining us uh, to celebrate these 12 folks, not just what they represent as individuals, but what we have as a nation and for all humanity. It's significant that we graduate not just NASA astronauts, but also international partner astronauts from the UAE. International collaboration is what has made our space station mission successful and will make our Artemis missions to the moon successful as well. We do a lot of cool things at NASA, and this event combines two of my favorite things, phenomenal people and celebrating success. A little more than two years ago, we introduced these astronaut candidates to the world at their selection. Today, we get to celebrate your successful completion of two years of rigorous training to become astronauts. This recognition of your achievement truly is commencement. This day, Tuesday, March 5th, 2024, is the day you become NASA astronauts and UAE astronauts. Congratulations, you did it, you got here. For many of you, becoming an astronaut is the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. I realize the dream was probably more about reaching orbit and floating in space, but you'll get there soon. You are here because you are exceptional. You are here because you are unique, and you bring something special to the table as individuals and as a team. Who you are is why you're here today. We train you to the standard of what a NASA astronaut should be. That matters because when you wear that blue flight suit, you become NASA to the world. People who see you in your blue flight suit may not know you by name, but they know who you are. They know who you are because you are NASA. I want you to remember that each time you put on that flight suit, you represent all of us across the agency. We are grateful for you. We are lifting you up every day. That's what you should take with you in every interaction you have as an astronaut. As the Associate Administrator, I want you to know that our commitment, my commitment to you and your loved ones here today and online is to ensure you fly safely. As you, well by, know, as you know well by now, NASA has core values and safety is utmost of those. Along, along with those is integrity, teamwork, excellence, and inclusion. We ask you to sit on the pointy end of a rocket and risk your life to advance our nation's goal to explore the unknown. I know that you do it willingly, more than willingly, frankly, eagerly. I was just at the Crew 8 Flight Readiness Review uh, last week, and your colleague and Crew 8 Flight Commander Matt Dominic reminded us that everything we do in spaceflight is held together by trust. You are trusting us with your whole life, with who you are, and we don't take your commitment lightly. Your safety is our number one priority. I know Frank didn't expect to spend more than a year in space. We kept him in space because we determined that it was safer than bringing him home in a compromised spacecraft. Reed, Victor, Christina, and Jeremy, you know we delayed their mission to the moon until September of 2025, and we did that 
for their safety. At NASA, we do hazardous things every day, not just on launch days. I exhort you to prioritize your role in your own safety and the safety of your coworkers and teammates. As an astronaut, you are now ready for a mission. Your missions will change our understanding of Earth and space. Your career as a space explorer begins right here on Earth. The work you do each day on the ground prepares you for space and helps ensure your fellow astronauts are safe also. We count on you to apply yourself and learn as diligently going forward from today as you have done to reach this day over the past two years. As a result, you go to space. Your mission may be aboard the International Space Station, or you may walk on the moon as part of the Artemis campaign. You're entering the astronaut corps at such an incredibly exciting time. We have multiple missions and multiple spacecraft in which you may have fly, and you heard about some of those earlier. You may wear a spacesuit and fly to our lunar outpost gateway, for which the UAE is providing an airlock. I do have one request. Please take us with you. Well, if you want to, I'm sign up, but take us with you in your heart. Bring us along on your journey. Share your story, the story of who you are, the special people that each of you are. And share that story of what you're doing and share the story of why it matters. You represent humanity's shared goal to explore. You embody the ideas we hold of who we can be when we are at our best. Let me congratulate you. So let's get started. Let me welcome to the stage our chief astronaut, Joe Acaba, to pin our new astronauts. Let me also ask Vanessa, Norman, Shannon to come on out. And we're also very uh, honored to have uh, the director of the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center, Salam al Amiri, on the stage for the ceremony. All right, it's time to officially welcome our 2023 astronaut class. All right, now for the moment we've all been waiting for. I think it's time to add a few more to our astronaut core. What do you say? Yeah. She holds a master's degree in computational and applied mathematics. She's an outdoor enthusiast, a major in the US Air Force, and she led the first ever all-woman formation of the F-22 in combat, Nicole Ayers. She has shown off her courage, which is grounded in her quiet strength. Please welcome astronaut Nicole Ayers. <laughs> He's a test pilot who holds a master's degree in mechanical engineering and a doctorate in aeronautics and astronautics. A major in the Air National Guard, he's accumulated more than 110 combat missions and 1,400 hours of flight time in more than 21 different aircraft. Marcos Berrios. Marcos and I were workout buddies our first year here during our group workouts, and it was always awesome because he, he really pushed us to work harder, be better, and uh, really get up every morning, those early, early mornings. Uh, Marcos is one of the most uh, dedicated and motivated people I know. Uh, he's an excellent teammate. Please welcome astronaut Marcos Barrios.
She holds degrees in mathematics and in biochemistry and molecular biophysics, as well as a doctorate in biological engineering. She's a track cyclist on the U.S. national team and a long team member for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Chris Birch. When I first met Chris Birch, I warned her that we were going to be great friends. Uh, <laughs> every day since then, I've been awe, in awe of the curiosity she displays to learn just a little bit more about everything. I've been impressed by her constant desire to find every obstacle, every challenge, and overcome that. And I've been super impressed by her ability to form incredible connections amongst our group. I'm grateful for your leadership as our class leader ever since the day. I'm grateful every day that you make me a better person. Please. Please welcome astronaut Chris Birch. A former intern at NASA's Amherst Research Center, she holds a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and a master's degree in mechanical engineering. She's a licensed private pilot and a leader in the energy industry, having managed drilling projects on oil rigs for over a decade. Denise Burnham. Denise, she's the person who will bring joys to the team. She will make us laugh no matter what the situation is. And I'll never forget our laughter, daily laughter in our survival training. She's a wonderful person, great leader, and a best friend. So please welcome astronaut Denise Burnham. He is a retired U.S. Marine who holds a master's degree in aerospace engineering. He's a nature enthusiast, a pilot who has logged more than 3,900 flight hours on 48 models of jet, propeller, and rotary wing aircraft. Luke Delaney. Luke, I uh, prepared a song for you about how great you are. But rest easy, today I'm only going to talk about what makes you known as Mr. Reliable. He puts 100% effort into everything he does and always with a positive attitude. He's an awesome office mate and he's an awesome teammate and a really great friend. Please welcome astronaut Luke Delaney. He holds a master's in naval architecture and marine engineering, electrical and computer engineering, and a doctorate in systems engineering. He served in the United States Coast Guard as a naval architect, salvage engineer, and damage control assistant, including officer of the deck, Andre Douglas. Brilliant from the first time we worked together during astronaut selection. And he is my go-to guy for complicated technical matters like orbital mechanics. But what really impresses me about Andre is the things you don't immediately see. He spends his weekends with his family doing volunteer work, and he supports the community, and he supports us as a teammate. He's the first guy that will turn to us when you really need him. He's kind of the glue that helps this swarm of flies stick together. So please welcome astronaut Andre Douglas. He's a naval aviator who holds bachelor's degrees in physics and history. He has masters in flight dynamics and in national security and strategic studies. He has more than 2,500 flight hours in 30 types of aircraft, more than 500 carrier assisted landings and flew 39 combat missions. Jack Hathaway.
Jack Hathaway is an awesome person to serve with. He's a father, a test pilot, a husband, and an excellent team player. I've learned so much when flying with him in the T-38, and we've had a blast flying on missions together. Such a great guy, I love you, brother. Please welcome astronaut Jack Hathaway. He's a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force and an actively practicing emergency medicine physician with fellowship training in wilderness and aerospace medicine. He holds a master's degree in mechanical engineering and a doctor of medicine. He's logged more than a thousand hours as a pilot. Anil Menon. He has this amazing, great, huge heart. He is one of the kindest people I know. He cares about everyone around him. He would give you the shirt off of his back, even if it was his last shirt. <laughs> he also puts 110% into everything he does. I love his work ethic. I've seen him put everything he has into everything he does, and he never leaves anything for the way back. Please welcome astronaut Anil Menon. He has a PhD in astrophysics from MIT and is a board certified medical physicist. He completed his residency at Harvard Medical School and then joined the faculty as a clinical physicist and researcher where he helped to treat cancer pa patients with radiation therapy. He's a private pilot and an Eagle Scout. Chris Williams. Chris is, Chris is an absolute uh, legend when it comes to understanding all the complex engineering systems we have to deal with uh, in all of our training. He's always asking questions at least two layers deeper than I can get to in the span of a class. And what's bigger than his intellect is, hu is his humility. Chris is always there with a smile on his face reminding us that we are so lucky to be here, a part of this team. Thanks, for Chris. Please welcome astronaut Chris Williams. After beginning her career in the United States Navy as an enlisted sailor, she is now a lieutenant commander with a distinguished career serving on an active duty as a naval aviator and test pilot. She holds a bachelor's and master's degree in aerospace engineering. Jessica Whitner. We've heard a lot about her excellence as a pilot, but the thing I wanted to focus on was her curiosity. If you walk into Jess's office, you see a collection of rocks sitting on her bookshelf. And that all comes from our geology trips and the passion she picked up for geology. And you know, the curiosity that she brings to that and everything else is just incredible to see. And I really look forward to watching her carry that curiosity as she flies into orbit to the moon and beyond. Please welcome astronaut Jess Whitner. She is the first Emirati and Arab woman astronaut and holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. She is a member of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers and worked as an engineer at the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, Nora Almatrushi. Everybody knows uh, astronaut training is a pretty dynamic environment and demanding, but that's where having a teammate like Nora is huge. Uh, whether you're riding out a hailstorm on top of a mountain in Wyoming or flying a T-38 jet, you can always count on Nora. Um, she's compassionate, she's fearless, she's always pushing boundaries and elevating the team. Nora, it's been a blast training with you. I look forward to our next adventure off planet.
Please welcome astronaut Nora Almatrushi. He earned a commercial pilot's license at 19 years old for, uh, from Australia's Civil Aviation Safety Authority, making him the youngest pilot in the Dubai Police Force. He holds a bachelor's degree in law and economics and served as the head of the training department of the Air Wing Center for the Dubai Police. Mohammed Amula. Mohammed, it would be selfless and funny. He is generous with his time. He's the first person to put everyone else before himself, and he does so with such an amazing sense of humor, which is a constant joy throughout our entire training process. Mohammed, we've laughed together, we've cried together, we've done difficult things together. Extremely fortunate to have had you as an office mate, as one of my main training partners, and most importantly, as a friend. And it would be an absolute honor and privilege to fly to space with you. Please welcome astronaut Mohammed Amola. Oh my goodness. Hey, let's, uh, let's give another round of applause to our 23rd astronaut class. And thank you to Vanessa, Norm, Joe, Shannon, and Solem. Uh, your leadership and dedication to excellence enables our human space exploration missions and makes these moments possible. Please join me in a round of applause for them as well. Uh, let, me, let me just take a moment. We're going to get to hear from uh, from someone uh, in the class here in a moment. And I just want to take a moment to thank the families for uh, sharing your family members with us here at NASA. Uh, NASA is very much a family, but we also know that the sacrifices that all of you have made over their careers, during their training, and some of the times well, they'll be away from you in the future. So thank you for that. One of your One of your responsibilities going forward will be speaking in front of large crowds uh, uh, many times. And uh, I know you're all very good at it already. But let me take a, a minute to introduce to you the newly minted NASA astronaut and class lead of the flies, Chris Birch. Office, the phrase said that space flight is the ultimate team sport, and that couldn't be further. Uh, that could be, you know, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> that team is not just, you know, the 12 of us here on the stage. It really is the entire NASA community, um, and so we would like to extend an additional thanks to all of the people that made today possible. You know, the entire NASA external uh, relations team, the uh, NASA communications team, uh, Courtney, Chelsea, thank you for, for putting, helping us you know, get ready for this event today um, and letting us celebrate with our families. Thank you to our leadership. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your dedication to flying our crews safely. Um, and thank you for your encouraging and inspirational words today. You know, we have been working hard for two years, receiving training, but it really has been this team, some of whom are in the back, some of whom are watching online, 
um, of trainers that have been dedicating two years teaching us. And so not only do they have to be experts at what they do, they have to get us to understand a little bit of what their expertise is in, be it you know, our, our CTOs, our space system trainers, our AOD instructor pilots, our Russian language instructors. Um, thank you all for putting up with us when we um, you know, forget how to conjugate a Russian verb for the 10th time, <laughs> or when we ask this incessant list of what if questions about how our spacesuit functions. Thank you very much. We also have to have a special thanks to the people that coordinated all of this training. Cassie, Heather, Donna, Christy, you guys are the real geniuses who can solve the incredible multivariable optimization problem that is our training schedules. What a mess. I can't believe you guys do that every week. Um, and then finally, becoming an astronaut is truly an apprenticeship. And so we are going to be better at our jobs because of the shared stories from our fellow astronauts, our future crewmates. Um, and so thank you for your mentorship. Thank you for your friendship. Um, and finally, of course, our families. You guys are our better halves, our spouses, our, our moms, our dads, our siblings, our friends, um, our teammates. You've been nurturing our curiosities sometimes, you know, since birth. You've been encouraging our passions and giving incredible amounts of patience as we chase our dreams all over the globe and landing here in Houston. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I know all of the flies feel a great sense of responsibility and excitement for what comes next. We feel ready. We want to put our efforts and our energy into supporting NASA's missions to low Earth orbit to do science on the space station or in support of our return to the moon with Orion uh, and uh, the Artemis program. So thank you. We're excited to be on this team. We're ready to get started. And I have to say thank you to my fellow swarm. You guys are incredible. I know that I am a better astronaut and a better human for all of the experiences that we have shared together. You know, we come from such different backgrounds. We have very different perspectives on a lot of things. And it is because of that that we have created this community of incredible technical and personal growth. I would not be standing here without you. You know, we have shared views from 40,000 feet uh, out the cockpit of the T-38 while you shared your techniques for how to fly the jet safely. You know, we have shared the responsibility, the pressure, and the satisfaction of doing a spacewalk rescue during our NBL training. We've shared the burden of carrying our favorite 30-pound lava rock back to camp because we thought it warranted more geology study. <laughs> and after a week uh, in the Alabama backcountry during our survival training, when all the other MRE food ran out, we shared together one final bag of peanut M&Ms. <laughs> you know. And as you guys can see, you know, we've, we've done a lot of training together. Um, we've also had a lot of fun together. And so I welcome, uh, I welcome you all to take part um, and see a little bit more about the spirit of what it means to be part of the swarm. I think we have a video for that. Thank you. Lights, camera. We come from all these different backgrounds, but we're really similar. And we've got pilots from every service. We've got scientists, we've got engineers, we've got a medical doctor, we've got really smart, capable, uh, and some of the most fun humans that I've ever been around. We really, really value team care. You know, we like to have a good laugh here and there because in the adventure of space exploration, as the humans in the loop, to be able to be calm and have that good team care, help each other out, make each other laugh, that's gonna go a long way. Who do I think is the funniest? Denise, for sure, is extremely funny. I think the funniest fly is probably Denise. Ooh, definitely Denise is the funniest in our class. You know, these are super smart people and uh, it's hard not to agree. <laughs> I think the funniest fly is Marcus. He's my office mate. The best dancer in the class is a really tough competition. Oh, the best dancer is me. You want to see it? I think I'd have to go with Andre for this one. Hands down, Andre. <laughs> I think we can all throw down when we're ready, so I'd give us all a little bit of 
credit and pat on our backs, so. I'm gonna say Marcos. He danced a lot in the office, though. Who has the best laugh? I would say that's a toss-up between Andre, who brings the energy, as well as Anil, who has that, I would say, wise uh, and experienced laugh. Uh, definitely Marcos. He always laughs in the office. So, who wants to go to the moon? Me! Who wants to go to the moon? It's me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. And I'm joining. <laughs> Who's the goat? The goat fly. I think the greatest fly of all time is Marcos. He's his office mate. <laughs> Marcos. 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 Definitely Marcos. 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 <laughs> it's Marcos. Well, as you can see, this class is as spirited as they are talented. And we cannot wait to see what their skills, creativity, and promise bring to our astronaut corps. I want to thank you all for joining us today and celebrating in this moment. And to thank our esteemed guests and speakers. Thank you for supporting these graduates as they embark on the greatest journey of their lives. As we wrap up, I want to invite all of our graduates to come up to center stage because this next part is for you. Let's give them a big round of applause. Today has been a celebration of drive, determination, and devotion. As you begin to take your first steps as new astronauts and turn them into our next giant leaps, you will join a rich and storied history of humans who have dared to reach beyond. You will build on over 60 years of human spaceflight exploration experience. You will seek knowledge and understanding and share it with the world. And when you go, you will go together, and we will all be with you. We are proud of you. Your country is proud of you. The world is watching, and the stars are waiting. Today, you are astronauts. As class mom, I will say today is a bittersweet day for me. But now it is time for you young astronauts to leave the nest and take flight. And as you embark on this next chapter, our next chapter of humanity's exploration of the cosmos, I want to leave you with, with this. In the words of one of my good colleagues, you have records to break, space to explore, humans to aspire, vehicles to fly, and dreams to achieve. I am so proud of each and every one of you and I cannot wait to see the dreams that you will continue to accomplish as astronauts. Thank you, and Godspeed. So, you want to be an astronaut? If you have what it takes, we want you up here. NASA's Professional Astronaut Corps works as a team to train and to fly for the benefit of all humankind and to provide crew perspective for all of human space exploration. We serve our country and our planet by testing, developing, investigating, and flying. Our decisions today ensure mission success and crew safety for some of the most audacious missions humans have ever undertaken to the moon and beyond. If this sounds like you, then join our team. Our selection approach is a holistic one. We learn all we can about an applicant in a variety of ways, including resume reviews, reference checks, and for those highly qualified applicants that advance to the interview rounds, we do individual and team exercises and medical assessments. The process involves a lot of subject matter experts, including current astronauts, and takes about two years from start to finish. Our goal is to select the class of astronaut candidates that are strong team members and operators, 
adaptable to a variety of situations, can be positive voices of NASA, and can successfully complete training and ultimately be assigned a mission. We depend on each other every day. And in space, our lives depend on one another. The success of our missions comes down to the people who are part of them. Astronauts don't just come from one walk of life or one educational or career path. Their multifaceted experiences have given them a strong sense of purpose, made them adaptable, and exposed them to work with people that are different from them, giving them strong teaming skills. Make sure your family and friends are on board with your goal. You will need a strong support network because you will lean on them, but don't worry, we'll be here for you also. Of course, minimum qualifications must be met to ensure an adequate foundation of education and experience. Those details can be found at nasa.gov forward slash astronauts.
welcome back to NASA's Johnson Space Center for our question and answer session with NASA's newest class of astronaut graduates. We have 100 students here from the area with us today, and some have even come with questions for our astronauts. We will also be taking social media questions using the hashtag AskNASA and questions from media here in the room. We will even have the opportunity to hear from some students from our astronauts' former schools. So let's go ahead and kick it off. Our first question today comes from Elliot at St. Paul Academy. Hi, I'm Elliot in seventh grade at SPA. My question is, what was the most difficult part about astronaut training? What was the most part of astronaut training? This is a great question. Uh, my usual go-to is the spacewalk training in the neutral buoyancy lab in the big pool. But I thought about this, and we actually spent 10 days backpacking through the wilderness of Wyoming at the National Outdoor Leadership School. And as a group, we packed in all of our gear. We hiked over, <clears throat> excuse me, we hiked over 35 miles, and we got above the tree line on multiple nights and camped up there. And we had a great time together uh, getting to know each other but also <laughs> weathering the uh, pop-up thunderstorms and the hail and the cold. And we even did a cold plunge in one of the big uh, ice lakes up there. So uh, it was a great time, but it was also one of the most difficult times. Thank you, Nicole. We'll take our next question in the room here from our media side. Good morning, my name is Ada Monzon. I'm from Guapa Televisión, Puerto Rico. Congratulations, Flies. You are certainly the scientific model of science exploration. The question is, the 12 of you represent NASA's commitment to diversity and inclusion. How is that helping you and the agency accomplish big challenges, such as the crewed missions to the moon and Mars? I can uh, start this one off. I think uh, just the group we had together as we started training, we had really new and fresh perspectives on problems and how to solve things. And I think that translates to the larger mission when you start going into deep space and you're on your own and you really got to get together, uh, come up with quick solutions to uh, address any issues you might encounter. So the diverse perspectives are huge. And, and the group, we've done a great job, I think, as a swarm coming to all those, uh, ch meeting all those challenges. Okay, we will take our next question from here in the room from our student section. Brian, go ahead. Uh, hi, my name is Brian Armshar. I'm from Clear Creek High School. It's an honor to be here. Congratulations to you all. Uh, my question is, how do you anticipate your perspective of life, Earth, and humanity changing after experiencing looking at the Earth from space for the first time? That's a great question. Thanks for asking. Uh, when you go up into space, and obviously we haven't been there yet, but we hear from all of our veteran colleagues uh, about how you just see one Earth, how you see the Earth, how it's all interconnected, all the ecosystems, all the places. There's no lines from orbit. You just see all the potential, all the just incredible beauty uh, of the Earth. And when you're up in space and you were part of the NASA team with our international partners, uh, we see the beauty of the Earth and we see the beauty of working as a team. So when we get up onto orbit, we're really excited to see what Earth looks like and know that we've gotten there as a team and that our success is, is uh, because of how well we work together uh, with our international partners across the world. Thanks for asking. Congratulations. Thank you, Brian. We will take another question from the media here in the room. Hello, good morning. My name is Samira Mendoza. I'm coming from Telemundo, Puerto Rico. And my question is for Marcus Barrios. Uh, what advice would you give to the Latin community and the young persons that are that wants to follow in your footsteps? What is needed? Gracias por la pregunta. I would say what is required is to maintain a sense of curiosity. I think that what's important is to explore, to understand problems, and that it's okay to ask for help. I think a important characteristic is to be very dedicated, very disciplined, uh, with a dose of humility that you don't know everything, to rely on your colleagues, your teammates, uh, so that not only you can make yourself better, but also the team. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay, we'll head back over to our student section. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Samantha Heim. I'm from Clear Creek High School. I'm so honored to be here. And my question for you is, what do you plan to achieve as an astronaut? Well, thanks, Vanessa, for the question. I uh, really appreciate you being here, too, and helping to support us on this day. Um, you know, what do I hope to achieve as an astronaut? Well, I think um, uh, Chris Birch put it really nicely that, you know, we're here as part of a huge team. And, you know, we're a very visible member of that team, but we're really re representing all of NASA, all of America, all of the world in what we do, because um, we're trying to explore for the, 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 the betterment of all. And so, you know, I think that puts a huge responsibility on us. And the thing that, at least for me, is, you know, I really want to make everybody proud and to, you know, sort of do my best to, 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 to give back and to, to make what we're doing here count. So, you know, for me, I think it's, uh, you know, living up to the responsibility that you all have put in us. Okay, Thank we have, you a, so much. We have a fairly similar question from social media. So if someone else could ask, could answer this. This is from Miss Blue Beats on Instagram, and they ask, what are your goals now that you all have graduated? So I guess I'll answer this since it's similar. Um, so our goals really are to explore space and bring everybody together. We're here to push the limits of humanity, right? Whether we're doing that on a space flight, whether we're doing that on the ground, whether we're doing that as a management astronaut, everything that we do in the office is to push us forward to keep us growing and trying new things. And most importantly, we're excited to work with these international partners, these commercial companies. I mean, Intuitive Machines just landed something at the south part of the moon. We're very excited. We have other capabilities. And for us, we want to work with all of these groups, all of these organizations to keep human spaceflight relevant, to keep us going forward. So we're very excited. And that's the goal that we overall have, is just to keep us moving forward. Okay, our next question is for Marcos, sent in from Ian Cologne at Westland Academy. Hello, Marcos. My name is Ian, and I'm from 6-1 at Westland Academy. I would like to ask you, which part was the hardest in your journey to become a national, and which skills and habits did you need to achieve this? Hola, Marcos. Mi nombre es Ian, y soy de 6-1 en Westland Academy. Te quería preguntar, ¿Qué parte fue la más difícil en tu proceso de ser astronauta? ¿Y qué talento y hábitos necesitaste para lograr esto? Y quería aprovechar y felicitarte en tu graduación. Bueno, gracias por la pregunta, Ian. Y gracias por las felicitaciones. I'm going to thank you for the question, Ian, and thank you for the, uh, the congratulations. I'm going to probably add to what Vapor started with earlier. I would say the hardest part, at least journey to becoming an astronaut with regards to training, was the spacewalk training. I think that part was not only physically, but also mentally demanding. Physically, because you're in a pressurized spacesuit, it's stiff, it requires strength and endurance, but also mentally because you have to be focused for six hours at a time, maintain high awareness of your surroundings as well as your, your partner. And what skills are needed, I would say, to succeed in the spacewalk training, dedication, uh, discipline, uh, to be prepared. So I think we spent quite a bit of time understanding the procedures, understanding what we needed to do. The other would be teamwork and with a dose of humility. You're not going to know everything. Uh, you're going to have to rely on your teammates. I was very lucky to go through training with Vapor, Luke, and Muhammad, and we spent hours and hours uh, studying together and training. And I know that made us better as individuals, but also more importantly, made us better uh, as a team. And the last is not only your peers, but also the instructors, your, your teachers, who have a vested interest in seeing you succeed. And so we were f very fortunate to have the likes of Emma, Jenny, and the entire uh, behavioral health performance team support us through that process. All right, thank you. You're welcome. We will take our next question from media here in the room. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Jessica Fernandez from the Weather Channel and the Weather Channel in Español. This question is for anybody that wants to answer it. Uh, so with such a diverse group, what do you believe is the importance of teamwork in achieving success in a space exploration mission? Hi, thank you for the question. I think 
uh, diversity in our group, which we, you all have heard about today, um, is incredibly important for space flight. Every one of us brings different background, and with that, different, different opinions about how to solve different problems. And so when you are open to the different solutions that are out there, you can really come up with the best solution. Um, everybody here, we work together incredibly well, um, and we're looking forward to working with the rest of the office as well now, too. But whoever is on the next cruise that are going up, know that the diversity that they bring to the table is, is really one of the strongest, uh, it's one of the strengths of the crew in that they can work through these problems and, and you know that they're gonna come up with the best solution they can. Thank you. Okay, we'll come back over to our student section. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Ashlyn Harper from Laporte ISD. This question is to N Nicole Ayers. When you were a pilot in the military, why did you choose to, why did you choose the call sign Vapor? Thank you for the question. Um, actually, you don't get to choose your call sign. Your friends in the squadron choose it for you. Um, so when you first show up to a, a squadron, you get to know everybody, they get to know you, they get to see your interactions, how you fly the airplane. Uh, how you work on the team as well. Uh, and then they get a, it's a tradition where we, um, they get to tell stories about everything that they've seen me do. Um, and so Vapor comes from one of those stories. So uh, I love it, it's a really cool call sign, but you know, naturally stories uh, aren't always the coolest. So, um, but yeah, that's where Vapor comes from. Thank you. Thank you, Ashlyn and Nicole. We will take our next question from here in the room from our media, go ahead. Hi there, congratulations. Michelle Choi with KHV 11 News, the CBS station here in Houston. Um, honestly, my question is geared to all astronauts here. Congratulations again. Uh, but I would like to specifically talk to uh, Nicole and Anil. I understand that you, both of you had some schooling here in the Houston and Galveston area. Uh, my question is, you know, you'll be the first group of astronauts uh, to do moon missions since the Apollo astronauts. If you could explain uh, to the audience and to the public what that means for you guys. Yeah, um, it was a great studying here uh, in the Houston area. I did uh, aerospace medicine at UTMB Galveston, which was a wonderful experience. One of the few places that you can really dive into medicine. Um, and uh, what I think the Artemis mission means to us is a lot like uh, Commander Wiseman talked about, it's, it's, it's all of us working together to just expand the boundaries and stand on the shoulders of giants and move forward for all of humanity. I think for space medicine that I have a particular interest in, we're gonna see more and more people up there. We're gonna see people up there longer than we've ever seen them and we're gonna see new conditions. It's just gonna expand the sphere of medicine as we understand it in space and as we understand it on the ground. And I'm excited about that because I love medicine. And so uh, it's not often you get to break into new territory like that. So um, I'm super excited for anyone who's entering medical school right now, who's interested in medical school, because it's those people who will also get to see the fruits of that and what we are able to discover through science and, and all that we learn. So thanks for the question. Love, love studying at Galveston. All right, thank you. We will take our next question from social media, and this question comes from the Heather Knot on Instagram. Who designed the group patch? <laughs> it's uh, definitely a team effort. Uh, <laughs> complicated story, we can't get into it. Um, but there's an awesome patch designer uh, that works at JSC that uh, we gave her our ideas, and they'd be like, yeah, that's great, but uh, let's tweak it. Uh, so we kind of uh, went through several iterations, and uh, if y'all haven't seen it, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Thank you, Denise. We will head over to our student section. Go ahead. Um, my name is Jerry Ruiz, and my question is, how long have you wanted to become an astronaut, and why did you become one? Uh, I wanted to become an astronaut since I was a little kid, and I think a lot of us are like that as well. Uh, ever since you're a little kid, you dream of space, and uh, you kind of grow up, and you find a career that matches you, whether it's medicine, or whether it's being a pilot, or whether it's being an engineer, or an academic. 
uh, you find part of your life that just makes you feel alive, that you're really excited about. And then as you go through that great career, maybe you have an opportunity, like everyone here does, to apply to a new astronaut class, uh, and you get the opportunity to become one of this incredible core. Uh, so it's great to have wanted to be an astronaut since you were a little kid. A lot of us are like that way, but some people just decide they want to be an astronaut one day and apply for the, uh, apply for the opportunity, and it turns out they're a great fit for the team. Are, are you thinking about being an astronaut someday? You mm, no. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for your question, and whatever you try to do with your life, I'm excited for you. <laughs> yes, thank you for your honesty. Not all of us can be as amazing as you are, but you can. Everyone apply. We have another video question. This one is from Olivia at St. Paul Academy. Hi, my name's Olivia, and I'm an eighth grade at SPA. What advice would you give to people with the goal of becoming astronauts? I'll take this one because I went to SPA and I love uh, Minneapolis and uh, Minnesota too, as much as Galveston. But uh, uh, my advice would be to work hard, be helpful, and never give up. Like Jack said, I wanted to be an astronaut since I was six, uh, and I, 40 years later I got that opportunity. And there was a lot of times to give up along the way there, but I didn't, and if I did, I wouldn't be here today. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Thanks for the question. Okay, we'll head over to the media section. Go ahead. Of course. Hi, good morning. My name is, my name is Fernanda Ramos. I'm from KXLN Univision 45 here in Houston. And my question is basically for uh, Dr. Berrios, or now astronaut Marcos Berrios. But first of all, congratulations to everyone on your remarkable achievement. Um, as you stand at this milestone, could you share how this achievement has shaped your perspective on representation as an Hispanic in space exploration? And my second question could be, could you offer any advice for Donald Jones dreamers aiming for the stars? Gracias por la pregunta. That's a, a deep question. I think it requires quite a bit of thought. I will say that representation is extremely important. I'm fortunate to have others kind of open doors for me, specifically Joe, Frank, Serena, and everyone who's come before me. I think today hopefully marks another opportunity to open doors for others like me in the future um, to recognize that the talent in the Latin American community is strong and that there's no reason for anyone to think otherwise. And so my advice to them would be to, to not give up, to stay curious, stay humble, be disciplined, and throughout all adversity, throughout all obstacles, it'll all be worth it in the end. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, we have another social media question. I think it'd be fun if a few of you would answer this. Um, it is from Twitch, and what is the one snack that you would take to space if you could pick one? <laughs> uh, for me, it will be definitely m and &M. <laughs> We shared a lot of memories about that one pack on the survival, so <laughs> good memory. You got it? Uh, for me specifically, it would be chocolate chip cookies. And only if they're burnt a little bit, because I like them crunchy. <laughs> I would say uh, peanut butter and chocolate chips, both on a spoon. Spin that thing around in zero G, it'd be awesome. And I'll top it off. No, no further question after I make the comment. I would take yellow mustard. I'm delicious. I would take salt and vinegar chips. All right. Thank you all. We will head over to our student section. Go ahead. Hello. I am Jacob Wartmaker from Klein High School with the High School Aerospace Scholars Program. Uh, my question was, what advice would you give someone like myself that is interested in the aerospace industry? <laughs> All right, so for uh, advice for yourself, and thanks for the question, this is probably applicable to a lot of folks. So, you know, starting out when you're doing your education in engineering, you're likely uh, interested in math and science. And you know, I say, kind of like others have said, 
is focus on that passion of math and science because as you start to really embrace those things, you'll perform really well at it and then other people will notice and they'll feed off of you. So whether you're going from your first job, uh, it could be in the aerospace industry, it gets contagious, people see you doing very well, you'll start to do excellent things in your industry, and then you kind of leapfrog to the next thing that you care about, but you wanna aim your vector towards space exploration, which is where we are today. You can also do space exploration in many different forms, whether it's an astronaut, whether it's somebody that's building a, spa a satellite, or you're doing space law, so you have many different options to explore space, and this is one of the bonuses in the suit that we can serve in space exploration. So my advice for you and everybody else is, point in the direction, try to achieve your goals, do everything that you can, work hard like some of our other classmates have said, but you know you want that vector to go towards that direction and use the skills and the passion that you have to get everybody excited so that you can go there. Could Thank I just you. add one thing to that? Uh, this is a great plug. I, I was a NASA intern and I do advise that, uh, look into internships, right? Having that opportunity to uh, work and, and experience what it may be like, and in seconding what Andre said, um, there's space for everyone. You don't have to be an astronaut. Everyone contributes in their own way, and they're all valuable. Thank you. Okay, we have a little time left. If we have any additional media who would like to ask questions, please come up to the microphone. Hey, Courtney. And hey, Courtney. We have a media right here. Go ahead. Hey. I'm just gonna give. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole a chance to answer earlier if she didn't get a chance to speak um, if she had anything to say about my original question do I need here yeah, this this was about being uh, formerly yeah. Anderson. yeah so I, I did my uh, grad graduate degree here at Rice and um, I think just I would add on to what Anil said in terms of you know you've got a wonderful support family here from the time that I spent here and you know working and living here it, you, it feels like you're constantly walking uh, where someone else walked previously. So the, the current and the previous astronauts, and this whole area is just full of so much history. So I can't wait to follow in their footsteps um, and just amazed by all the history around here. Appreciate it, thank you. Okay, we have a question from Sunflower Spirited on YouTube, and they ask, what's the story behind the 30-pound lava rock? I think we both have to answer this one. <laughs> so I'll start us off. We were in Arizona, and we were on a geology expedition to learn about uh, the geology that we may find out on the moon or Mars one day. And uh, we came upon a really exciting, interesting rock that had three different types of crystals inside this rock. Uh, even our geologist instructors were very excited about this. We took a nice long break there. and. Uh, and then we, yeah, we decided, well, we're just gonna bring it back with us. <laughs> and it was no small rock. This was not a small sample. This was the size of a large loaf of bread. Lava rocks are quite dense, full of these beautiful minerals. I think we called it like fruit cake, because uh, it looked so colorful. And in true fly fashion, we got into an argument over who would put the rock in their backpack to do the heavy work to carry it back. Everyone wanted to help out but it was actually just that uh, after we had done our studies in the field, took it home, sliced it up for us, and has been working to polish it by hand for memories. <laughs> okay, we have another question here in the room. Go ahead. Hi, Andrea Leinfelder with the Houston Chronicle. I'm sorry if I missed this, but I haven't heard the origin story yet of how you guys became called the flies. So it is tradition for a class when they are uh, brought into the office for the first time to be given a name from the class preceding them. And so the class that was uh, hired before us was the Turtles. And the Turtles got to know us a little bit and bestowed on us this fly name. Uh, and traditionally these names that you know, go back, um, you know, for every, every class has had one, they are usually things that are not you know, do not take well to flight. And so we were really surprised that they gave us a flying creature. Um, and it was quite a compliment. I think they had a lot of faith in us um, and hope that we fly soon. And so it was probably one of the, one of the nicer uh, call signs for a, a, class, a class could have. Um, 
there's too much heavy laughter on the fly soon part from some of our colleagues in the audience. Um, but you know, in, in, as Denise pointed out, in picking out our patch and designing it, we did settle on the house fly outline. Um, so we do respond quite well to the swarm. We think it has a little bit more pizzazz. All right, well, that concludes our astronaut Q&A session. Thank you to our students and to our media who joined us in person today to ask questions, and to our students who joined virtually, and all of those who asked questions through social media. And a huge thank you to our astronauts for your time and your wonderful responses today. And for those of you who feel inspired, don't forget that applications are now open and you can apply today. Thanks for joining.